Hi everyone, uh, this is my second video of the day here. Uh, it's a Monday and um, first of three days off of work for me each week. And I'm always a little scruffy on Monday because I roll out of bed early, uh, don't bother shaving or anything, just throw out some clean clothes and take my daughter to school, drop her off, and then hit the thrift shop. So apologize for the scruffy appearance, but uh, that's just Monday's my scruffy day uh, before I kind of get back into the swing of things. Uh, I like to get out and hit the thrift shops after I drop my daughter off and uh, Later on in the day, I get cleaned up and stuff. Uh, but I'm trying to knock out some videos uh, while I have time. And I've uh, been meaning to make, uh, just made a video of my thrift shop finds over the past month, month and a half. And this is going to be stuff, uh, stuff I bought online or at record shops, bookstores, things like that. So uh, let's get into it. First of all, uh, something I bought for my wife, kind of for both of us for Christmas. I always like to buy her uh, some kind of nice record for Christmas. Usually something, uh, the Disney record, something for our Disney record collection. And uh, this year, there was a really cool record I saw online and uh, knew I had to have it. Wanted to get the special edition version of it. At least I think it's a special edition. Um, it's kind of a splatter vinyl. Uh, ordered it from Mondo, Mondo T-shirts, I think is the name of the company. Um, Mondo box mailer. Uh, they make some really cool uh, soundtrack uh, vinyl pressings a lot of times or maybe all the time with original new artwork um, but this I saw and uh, it's just a beautiful beautiful package all around and wanted to get it it is the soundtrack yeah, soundtrack to Ratatouille the Disney Pixar film and uh, comes with a cool kind of obi strip here and uh, it's got Original artwork by someone named Nicole uh, Nicole Gustafsson, but just absolutely beautiful, beautiful original artwork here. There's a can't remember his name, the Star Ratatouille here, cooking up his uh, little stew there, and then on the back side you got his uh, human companion there that he kind of uh, controls and teaches how to cook. Um, Beautiful gatefold, and then on the inside, you've got a uh, a nighttime uh, rooftop cityscape of Paris with the big Gusto sign. Just absolutely beautiful, beautiful artwork. They did a really nice job. I have to say, uh, kicks the shit out of anything that uh, Disney's been putting out on vinyl as far as their artwork and packaging, unfortunately. Disney needs to step up their game and uh, put stuff out at this level on a regular basis, I'd say. But, you know, that's another thing. Another issue, uh, has a nice uh, insert here, kind of talking about the, the filmmaker and uh, the uh, composer, their history together, and how this came about. Uh, I'm not going to get into that can't remember it. Uh, read it a few weeks ago. But here's the actual vinyl itself. Um, nice custom labels there. You know, the red Tui thing on one side and on the other side some custom art. And uh, you can see it's a nice kind of uh, multicolored splatter vinyl. It's really beautiful all around. Had to have it for the Disney collection. Sometimes Usually for Christmas, like I say, uh, I'll buy something, mail order online, something a little more expensive. Last year it was a big Frozen Deluxe Edition thing with different colored vinyl, laser etching, and all that kind of jazz. But I think this is about 30 bucks, so kind of pricey for what I normally buy. Alright, um, and then getting into uh, stuff from... Second and Charles and the record stores here in town. From Second and Charles, picked up a few CDs. Uh, Usually I buy the really cheap stuff there, but this is a little more expensive for me, a little more being $3 uh, in this case. Uh, Emerson, Lincoln, Palmer, Pictures and Exhibition. Nothing special about this at all. It's a Columbia House uh, Record Club CD version, um, but a uh, record I love, and this is just kind of my beater version for the car. I've got a Japanese mini LP style CD gatefold of this, but not something I'm going to throw in my car and drive around with and get beat up. This is my beater version that I can just throw in the car and listen to when I feel like. 
and then this uh, kind of like uh, Pink Floyd I've been picking up or kind of like the Beatles I've been picking up Pink Floyd CDs because uh, you know collecting the vinyl gets pretty expensive so when I see a CD for a few bucks um, I'll pick it up and uh, this is a uh, it says anniversary edition of animals I'm not sure what anniversary offhand but uh, probably 20th 30th I don't know. Uh, it's got the hype sticker on the front pretty cool um, I don't know if there's a whole lot of special stuff going on um, with this but uh, it seems like with things like this Pink Floyd Led Zeppelin the later on you get with the remastering the more it gets into over um, dynamic compression and you know made more for iPods and car stereos and just kind of a harsher sounding so I try to go with the earlier stuff and then I saw this second and Charles um, just popped up in their their CD collection this might have actually been in the rock section I can't remember but I hadn't seen it before Max Roach plus four on MRC and here he's got uh, Kenny Dorham on trumpet Sonny Rollins on tenor sax fantastic Ray Bryant piano um, excellent excellent CD great to hear uh, Max Roach is playing on this he takes a lot of solos fantastic CD I think I paid like four bucks um, four or five bucks maybe five bucks there's more than I typically have been paying for CDs there at second and Charles but this one's definitely worth it. it had a beat up cracked case so I traded it out for a brand new jewel case and it looks much better um, and then more from second and Charles on vinyl uh, this one just kind of came in by itself not really part of a collection but uh, for eight dollars a little pricier than I normally pay for vinyl there but it's Miles Davis and I love Miles my funny Valentine Miles Davis in concert on Columbia stereo pressing this was eight dollars so a little more than I normally pay there um, this one uh, yeah I took a chance on it uh, based on the players it's not that great but for five dollars um, I didn't get burned too bad Bud Shank and Bob Cooper the Bud Shank Bud, Bob Cooper Orchestra flute oboe and strings on uh, World Pacific which is uh, Pacific Jazz before that. Um, yeah, it's okay. A couple of good players, Bud Shank and Bob Cooper. Um, more, definitely more uh, kind of easy listening type stuff, but it's all right. It's not great. And then uh, right before Christmas, Second and Charles, I uh, walked in one day and saw an employee with a little rolling cart, and there was a box of records on top of this rolling cart, and she was just frantically kind of quickly putting them away in the bins and I knew right away she wasn't a regular employee because no one in that store moves quickly uh, their employees are kind of slackers I'd say uh, younger generation takes their time laid back chilled out the most work I see people doing putting in as they go through the record selection is uh, if a stack of records is tipped forward in the bin they just kind of give it a shove as they walk by and flip everything back and that's about it never take their time to go through the record bins and pull stuff out like jazz from the rock and put it back in the jazz section never re-alphabetize stuff the store's a mess but in a way that's good because if you go through everything you'll find these little gems in the wrong section um, oftentimes priced a lot lower than they should be but this particular day this young woman was working really hard putting stuff away and I just flew over and started looking through her box and she's frantically pulling stuff out of the box trying to put it away and I'm trying to quickly go through the box before she pulls everything out and uh, after I pulled some stuff out of the box I really wanted I went through all the stuff she'd been putting away actually in the bins went through all the bins and pulled out some cool stuff so a lot of neat stuff some jazz and some rock uh, this one Ella Fitzgerald on Verve Ella swings gently with Nelson that's Nelson Riddle doing the arrangements Ella Fitzgerald on vocals for $2.95 on Verve nice Clean Verve. Another one on Verve, this one earlier pressing, it looks like Ella Fitzgerald sings the Cole Porter songbook. I think she's one of my favorite, if not my favorite, female jazz vocalists here. Nice gatefold here on Verve. Double LP set. This was uh, $2.95 again. Uh, this is Duke Ellington, Ellington Uptown. Um, I think Barnes & Noble just put out a really nice reissue of this, uh, I want to say last year. And uh, at the time I didn't, we don't have a Barnes & Noble in town anymore. There's one in Ocala, which is like 
half an hour, 45 minutes away. But didn't go. It was some kind of like, it wasn't record store day, but something like that. But didn't go, didn't check it out. I wish I had, but unfortunately on their website, they didn't say much about the pressing of their reissue of this. Apparently it was a really nice audiophile type uh, pressing, um, but you couldn't tell that from their official website. You know, I just figured it was a $30 uh, reissue, nothing special. I wasn't going to pay 30 bucks for a you know, reissue from CD type record, but it looked like they did it really nice. So kind of sad I didn't grab that, but... Um, Found this for four bucks, nice original Ellington Uptown on Columbia. Um, Columbia, Columbia Masterworks label, 6i. Pretty cool. Um, from the same collection for four dollars, Herbie, Man Herbie Hancock, Manchild. And Esquivel and his orchestra, Other Worlds, Other Sounds for $3.95. Looking at some Esquivel. Never had picked up any of his records. Nice living stereo pressing. And then uh, these are really cool. Um, usually when these uh, Pink Floyd records come in, they price them like 20 bucks or more if they're in any kind of decent shape. But these they priced a little bit lower, so I snatched them up. Um, this is Adam Hart Mother, seven dollars and seventy-five cents. So in pretty nice shape. Just a slight bit of ring wear on this um, yeah like I said I don't I don't really pick up stuff like the Beatles or Pink Floyd on vinyl because it's usually too expensive for me but for eight dollars um, and the records just in pretty much immaculate shape so I wasn't gonna pass that up for eight bucks more than I usually spend at second and Charles uh, I usually go there just to find the really cheap stuff a lot of times stuff they've underpriced. Um, and then uh, Amagama, two LP set here. Uh, this one, $6.95. In really nice shape, a little bit of ring wear, and someone wrote their name, uh, K. Archer, in the corner, but I'm not going to complain. Um, didn't really want to spend a whole lot of money for this record. I don't really know a whole lot about it. This one, really nice shape too. But it looks like it's got a live set and a studio album. Uh, this one I was really excited about. Um, yeah, Jimi Hendrix Experience. Are you experienced? I guess this is a U.S. original stereo pressing for three dollars and ninety-five cents. Really nice shape. Uh, definitely underpriced. Um, yeah, they're just kind of clueless at the store the way they price things. Um, records a little scuffed up. Um, but, you know, for four bucks, I'm not going to complain. It needs to be clean. It's a little scuffy. Plays really nice. I threw it on the turntable. Plays very nice. Uh, definitely needs a deep cleaning. So as soon as I get my replacement record cleaning machine, I'll give a nice thorough cleaning and see how good it sounds. So that's it for Second of Charles. Uh, just happened to get lucky that day. Uh, they just brought in some uh, seasonal temp uh, employees and actually got some work out of them, unlike the regular employees. And they put out vinyl they'd probably been sitting on for months, who knows. Nothing really new vinyl-wise in that store since then. It's kind of sad. So next up, uh, I took three different separate trips to my local favorite record store here in town, Arizona Records, and traded in some records. Um, a lot of stuff I've picked up in thrift shops that's worth some money. Um, didn't really have a whole lot of spending money, or hadn't budgeted a lot of spending money to buy records, but been kind of trying out um, bringing in some records, some uh, more valuable records from thrift shops, trading them in, getting store credit, and then buying records. So the first trip here, uh, I brought in some, uh, I happened to be in Goodwill one day, and as I was staying there going through the records, or going through the CDs actually, I saw a guy come out with some records, drop them in the bin and leave. Looked to see what he dropped off. He brought in some Michael Jackson records, a picture disc of Thriller, uh, Ben, and uh, got to be there. Uh, double LP set uh, called the Remix Suite. Remixes of his classic, uh, I guess, Jackson 5 or maybe his own, I guess, like his own early recordings. And uh, another record by a guy named P.F. Sloan on Atco Records. Kind of a collectible, I guess, folk psych type record or something. Didn't really do it for me, um, so I brought those in and got, I can't remember how much store credit, um, 30, 40 bucks, something like that. 
and uh, picked up some uh, some variety of stuff. Um, first of all, a Dave Brubeck quartet record on fantasy, uh, one of those early fantasy records on uh, red vinyl. Saw this and had to have it. I love these old fantasy red vinyl records. And a uh, record by The Bug. Um, I can't remember what the guy's name is. Uh, not Justin Broderick, I don't think. Uh, Kevin Martin. Kevin Martin is The Bug. Um, yeah, kind of some uh, grimy, dubby, kind of reggae meets industrial sludge. Uh, heavy stuff, but this is uh, The Bug featuring Warrior Queen. Uh, action Pack and War of Words, or no, World War Three on the B side. Um, but yeah, I've been looking for uh, some singles or 12 inches by The Bug. I really like this stuff. Uh, it's definitely different than what I normally listen to. This old jazz. This is some heavy, grungy, noisy, fun stuff to listen to. Uh, and then a. Uh, Collection here, uh, live at the Knitting Factory, uh, recording some of the Knitting Factory concert space in New York City. This is Volume 1, Live at the Knitting Factory, put out by uh, A&M Records. So, kind of some cutting-edge music. Um, some of the bands on here, Curlew, um, I don't have my glasses, uh, Jazz Passengers, Mark Dresser, Mark Feldman, Nels Klein, Scanners, um, now you get the idea. Kind of the New York downtown, uh, no wave, not really no wave, it's after that, but kind of the John Zorny type music. Um, neat stuff. Uh, I've got some of these on CD, the Live at the Knitting Factory series on CD. Interesting music. And then uh, went through the dollar bin and found some cool stuff in the dollar bin. Uh, not one of the most sexy of Impulse uh, label uh, records, but this I think is a reissue of their earlier recordings from I don't know, the 40s, 50s, I don't know. Uh, the vocal trio Lambert, Hendrix, and Ross sing a song of Basie on Impulse. Um, they do the vocalese style singing where they kind of take the melody of a uh, of music. I think these are Basie songs here and the improvised lyrics to go over the top. Cool stuff. A dollar from the dollar bin. Um, Les McCann, I've been picking up some Les McCann records, uh, kind of a funky uh, funky jazz stuff. This one on Pacific Jazz, Spanish Onions, recorded live. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I think I picked up some more of the same visit, but things have kind of gotten shuffled here and I can't remember what else. So second visit to the store, I brought in some, uh, some Beatles records I'd picked up at a Goodwill. Um, nothing too special. Beatles love songs and uh, Hey Jude. I guess a couple of compilations. I like the Beatles, but um, it's not really the focus of my collection. And I know there's other people that enjoy these records more. Um, brought in a record by uh, Leslie West of Mountain, and a few more records, kind of rocky type records, rock records, uh, classic rock stuff. I'm not quite into so much. And traded them in, and. Uh, yeah, like 30 bucks store credit, somewhere around there. Or maybe a little more. Um, I got more. I can't remember what... I brought in some higher dollar stuff. I can't remember, though, what exactly it was. But I, I spent a lot of money on, uh, on things I picked up. I think I paid like 20 bucks. Um, out of my store credit and then an extra 20 bucks cash or something like that. So I picked up some uh, more pricey stuff I wouldn't normally just put on the credit card or debit card when I came in. But uh, I'd seen these before and definitely wanted them. First up, uh, Con Space Shanty. This is featuring Steve Hillage and Dave Stewart. A couple of uh, big players on the uh, kind of the British Canterbury scene. Kind of a uh, progressive rock, but not mainstream like Yes or ELP or anything. This is uh, guys from like Hatfield in the North, Gong, uh, Matching Mole type stuff, Soft Machine, kind of that scene of music. Uh, this is one of the early ones featuring Dave Stewart on keyboards, Steve Hillage on guitar. Um, artwork, I believe, the cover art on this is uh, Jean Girard Mobius. But anyway, this is a U.S. pressing on PVC Records. 
kind of pricey, like I said, 30 bucks. Uh, definitely a collectible record, but you know, bringing in some stuff to trade in kind of took the pain off of buying it. Uh, another one, uh, I had this record years ago. I think I bought it in a thrift shop for like a dollar or less and uh, got rid of it in one of my purges, my record collection, and now I came back and paid 20 bucks for it. But again, it was store credit, things I'd paid, you know, a dollar or less, traded in. Got some decent store credit. Uh, Pink Floyd Metal. Nice clean pressing for 20 bucks. Um, speaking of Steve Hillage, uh, I've got uh, several of Steve Hillage's records. But uh, this one I did not have. Uh, this is Green. Steve Hill is Green on uh, Virgin. British pressing here. And uh, on the same trip, um, didn't make it through the dollar bin on this trip, I guess. But I uh, just picked up some of these high dollar ones. Uh, Public Image Limited, a little 7 inch single here. You've got uh, Public Image on the A side. And then the B side is a track called The Cowboy Song. Three bucks, so I figured I'd pick it up. And, um, actually I did hit the dollar bin on this visit. I've got several dollar bin records, it looks like. So, uh, here's the dollar bin from this visit. Uh, Pete Senfield, the, uh, lyricist for, uh, Greg Lake, um, from, uh, the first two King Crimson albums with Greg Lake, and then Greg Lake's, uh, work with Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, wrote the lyrics to their early stuff. Pete Senfield, uh, record called Still, on the Manicore label. This is associated with ELP, obviously. Um, yeah, a little dirty, uh, kind of beat up, but um, always kind of curious about this record. Haven't given it a spin yet, but it's got some good players. Uh, Greg Lake makes an appearance. Um, Mel Collins on sax. Uh, yeah, Keith Tippett, I think, on piano. Dollar. Wasn't going to pass that up. Um, this one's a really nice record, but. Obviously, it's got some issues here with the seams split and taped up and stuff, but this is Nat Adderley, the brother of Cannonball Adderley, to the Ivy League from Nat Adderley. Um, with uh, his brother Cannonball Adderley and alto sax, Junior Mance, piano, Charles Wright, drums, Sam Jones, Al McKibben, bass, and Ernie Wilkins, uh, arrangements. But a nice MRC Jazz uh, album here. Really good stuff. Uh, Herbie Mann, Latin Fever. Can never have enough Herbie Mann records. Um, it's kind of one of his earlier ones. I like his earlier stuff better. Um, yeah, it's a nice jazz flute. Uh, Bud Shank and the sax section from Pacific Jazz. Um, yeah, so I guess he took a lot of different uh, sax players, arranged stuff for a big uh, sax section. Um, yeah, interesting record. Uh, Morgana King, jazz vocalist for you, for me, everyone on the MRC label. Couple uh, good jazz guitarists on here, um, Mundell Lowe and I think Al Kyola. Although unfortunately they just take very brief solos on this and uh, it's so-so. So-so jazz vocals, I'll probably get rid of this one. Um, yeah, so I kind of, I was excited about um, getting a lot of store credit on that visit and uh, not paying a lot of money for all those records and decided I was feeling good so I decided to hit the other record store in town and I uh, went and uh, spent about 20 about 25 bucks there um, so there goes my savings um, but anyway I saw a couple records I really wanted um, Jerry Mulligan the Jerry Mulligan quartet recorded in Boston at Storyville on Pacific Jazz Records and unfortunately, I found like Pacific Jazz, uh, great West Coast uh, jazz label, but their their pressing quality, a lot of their records just don't sound great. Uh, contemporary records out of LA, they always sound really nice, um, but Pacific Jazz, a lot of their earlier stuff just sounds. I don't know if it's a pressing quality, the recording, but they just don't sound that great. But um, important recordings, great musicians, so. Probably better to pick up on CD in general, I'd say, the early stuff from Pacific Jazz, but it's cool to have for the collection. I like Jerry Mulligan quite a bit. This one's got Bob Brookmeyer on uh, trombone, Bill Crow bass, and Dave Bailey on drums, along with Mulligan on baritone sax and piano. Um, that was kind of pricey. That was 
15 bucks. Uh, Art Pepper, um, part of a, I guess a four volume set. Uh, Art Pepper recorded live at the Village Vanguard. This one, I think, from the, sometime in the mid 80s, um, 85, on uh, Contemporary Records. This is volume four from this series. So you got Art Pepper on clarinet and alto and tenor sax. George Cables on piano, George uh, Mraz on bass, and Elvin Jones on drums. Uh, good stuff here. All right, so that was the uh, second visit, trading in stuff at the record shop. And third visit, um, what did I bring in? I brought in some reggae records I picked up in the uh, at the Goodwill. Um, some comps, things like that, a record by Inner Circle. Um, you know, stuff with some value. Um, a double double LP set of remixes by U2 called uh, 2 U U2 Remixes, but kind of a, uh, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s, kind of trancey, ravey type remixes of U2 stuff. I'm not a huge U2 fan, so I think someone else would probably rather have it, a U2 collector. And then a record uh, pulled from the free bin at 2nd and Charles here in town that was put out by a local record label called uh, Fueled by Ramen. And it's a band called The Stereo. Um, 300 is the name of the record. It was still sealed. And uh, it's got some value online, people asking 30 bucks or so. And it's got that local connection. It came out from a label that used to be at least based here in town. So I knew that had some value brought in. Altogether, got uh, I think like forty dollars store credit, and this visit I wanted to pick up some more jazz, so I picked up uh, focused on jazz records. And yeah, first of all, uh, Illinois Jacket with Milt Buckner on organ and Alan Dawson on drums. This one on Cadet Records, formerly Argo Records, recorded live at Lenny's on the Turnpike in West Peabody, Massachusetts. I haven't listened to it, but. Uh, I like Milt. Milt Buckner was one of the early uh, jazz organists, actually came along before Jimmy Smith. Um, interesting fellow, uh, Illinois Jacket, great sax player. Uh, this one, I've uh, been picking up some records by Shirley Scott on Impulse, and uh, this one was new to the store, um, hadn't seen this before. This one, Latin Shadows, Shirley Scott, arranged and conducted by Gary McFarland. Gary McFarland was a um, vibraphone player as well as an arranger, um, talented musician. I think he died in a car accident at a fairly young age. Um, but this one is kind of some tracks um, don't feature Shirley Scott so much on the organ. Um, they're more of kind of an arranged type sound, uh, you know, more uh, Gary McFarland type thing. Um, and then some are more of like a smaller group here. So you got Shirley Scott on organ with McFarland on vibes, Jimmy Rainey guitar, Bob Cranshaw bass, Mel Lewis drums, and Willie Rodriguez on Latin percussion. And then the other tracks are uh, kind of a bigger, you know, orchestrated band. Got a lot of the same musicians, but more of a McFarland thing. The other tracks, the smaller combo type things are more uh, Shirley Scott type music. Uh, interesting record. Um, Listened to it uh, once and uh, kind of dug it. Um, I still like Jimmy Smith better as far as playing organ, but Shirley Scott's got a different sound. Um, good musician. Uh, this next few are some reissues here. First of all, a uh, reissue from Savoy Jazz. This one called Presenting Cannonball. So obviously Cannonball Adderley here. Um, I guess one of his early recordings. I don't know. Um, Cannonball Adderley on alto sax, his brother Nat on cornet, Kenny Clark on drums, uh, Hank Jones piano, Paul Chambers bass. This one like a 1980s uh, Savoy Jazz reissue. I'm sure this came out sometime in uh, I don't know, mid mid to late 50s on Savoy Jazz. It had the shrink wrap on it, but I don't I don't like beat up shrink wrap, so I took it off and cut off the hype sticker here. Um, let's see, it has a price, five, $5.98, $5.98 was the list price back in the 80s. This so nice, uh, nice reissue here. Um, sounds pretty good, pretty good pressing. This next one on Limelight Records, this is called Cannonball and Coltrane. It's a reissue of a record originally, I think, on Mercury Records. Um, can't remember the original title. 
pretty nice, uh, pretty nice reissue here. Nice thick gatefold, kind of cool cover art. Got a little booklet on the inside here, um, talking about, you know, I guess, the history of Cannonball and Coltrane playing together. Um, pretty neat. And then um, this next two are original jazz classics uh, reissues put out by uh, Fantasy Records from the 80s, I think. Um, this one, Jackie, the Jackie McLean, McLean, McLean Quartet, Quintet, sorry. Uh, Jackie's Pal introducing Bill Hardman. Um, yeah, so originally on Prestige, reissued in the 80s by Original Jazz Classics. It says limited edition series. Uh, so McLean on alto sax, Bill Hardman on trumpet, with Paul Chambers bass, Mal Waldron piano, Philly Joe Jones on drums. Pretty cool. I've uh, been wanting to check out some of these OJC uh, vinyl reissues. I've got several original jazz classics CD reissues, but hadn't picked up any of the vinyl. Um, reasonably priced to use. This one was $10. Yeah, it's in beautiful shape. This one uh, got some staining on the cover and stuff, a little bit of ring wear, but um, it's a classic. Sonny Rollins, Sonny Rollins Freedom Suite. Originally on. Uh, Riverside, reissued in the 80s by Original Jazz Classics, uh, with Oscar Pettiford on bass, Max Roach on drums, uh, from 1958 it looks like. So I definitely want to add some Sonny Rollins to my collection, I don't have a whole lot by him. And then finally, uh, while I was in the store uh, looking at records, uh, they were playing something on the stereo that sounded really good. and. Uh, when I look up and glanced, I recognized the. Uh, I saw the album they had behind the turntable, recognized the musician, and knew I had to have the record. And uh, I was hoping it wasn't original and cost a fortune. It wasn't. It's a reissue, kind of a compilation reissue. Takeshi Teriuchi Nippon Guitars. Um, nice compilation. Instrumental Surf, Ileki, and Sugaru Rock, 1968 to 74. So a nice uh, compilation here, fifteen dollars. Um, got some nice reproductions of the, I guess, singles and albums on the back. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, really cool instrumental stuff. Um, the Ventures were a big, big thing in Japan back in the '60s, and this was one of the main, uh, main guys who kind of followed in their wake as far as Japanese guitarists. Uh, fantastic, talented guitarists. So definitely happy to add this to the collection along with my Ventures records. So that's it. Uh, that's it for newer stuff, um, or stuff I bought from record stores, not just thrift, all, thrift uh, store stuff. Um, kind of some higher pricey stuff. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get this on uh, video, document it before it all ends up shuffled in with the rest of the records. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, sorry about the length of the video. Um, just wanted to get these done. See you all next time, hopefully uh, showing off my new record cleaning machine. Bye.